Welcome back. Uh, we did promise you we're coming back with someone else who is going to be talking about yet another topic. And now it's the alleged defamatory tweet. Aisha Buhari is to testify against a university student. Uh, if you haven't read the story, Nigeria's first lady Aisha Buhari is billed to testify against Aminu Adamu, a student of the Federal University Dutse Jigawa State, for allegedly defaming her. Mr. Adamu, who is 24 years old, was alleged to have published a defamatory statement on his Twitter handle against Mrs. Buhari. In the alleged, allegedly offending tweet, Mr. Adamu, who is a final year student studying environmental management, posted a, a picture of the first lady with a caption in Hausa saying, Mama is feeding fat on poor people's money. The tweet was posted on 8th of June, but Mr. Adamu, trailed by a team of detectives, was arrested in Dutsi, northwest Nigeria, on 18th of November and weeks to Abuja. After nearly two weeks in detention, Mr. Adamu was arraigned on Tuesday before a judge, Yusuf Halilu, of the Federal Capital Territory High Court at Meitama, where he pleaded not guilty and was remanded in Suleja Prison in Niger State. And so we have Mr. Olubenga George, a political analyst and head political desk, African Civil Society Forum, join us. Welcome to the program, Mr. George. Thank you for having me. Good morning. Yeah. So um, uh, we have heard what happened. Uh, Aisha Buhari is going to testify, and uh, this uh, young man has been arrested and detained. Let's get your reaction to that. Uh, well, I think for me, it's a mix of reactions, and um, I will actually be addressing the issues from different angles. Uh, first of all, uh, I would like to say that um, uh, Defamation of any kind or any sort is uh, totally condemnable. Uh, so uh, the fact that uh, the young man, you know, uh, spoke about um, the first lady, uh, that's the wife of Mr. President, uh, uh, having fed fat, you know, uh, with public funds, um, is uh, a sort of um, a condemnable statement, especially when we look at it in the context of um, uh, the word body shaming. You know, um, so today, body shaming is a very, very condemnable act in our social space, especially because of um, the effect it has on people who happen to be uh, victims. We've had several people who, if do, they do not have um, the strong will and a great sense of self, of conviction of themselves, you know, they take to different things and um, some take to suicide, some take to all kinds of uh, negative um, effects. Uh, but thank God it's the wife of the president and nobody uh, it can actually be excused, I mean, where this is concerned. So, yes, uh, if we take it from the angle that he's body shaming the wife of Mr. President, then I think it's a condemnable statement. Yeah, but, but do, you but think however, do you think the tweet... Do you think the tweet is about body size or the fact that people are suffering and they are looking good? The first family is looking good. The fact, the, the truth of the matter is uh, office, I mean public office in Nigeria, if you have looked back from time, comes with its pecs. And I believe that um, if you happen to physically add up uh, well, uh, it may be one of the pecs that you get from uh, being a uh, being wife of president. Um, this is not the first time we're going to have a president or a political person who perhaps was as slim as me in the past and then get into office. And maybe because of the comfort, don't, let's not forget that when you get into that office, uh, the only thing that you get to do physically is maybe uh, your mental capacity to deliver, to make decisions and then control issues and events. Um, when you take that away, uh, what you have, you are uh, kind of relaxed. You do it in the most relaxed atmosphere. So if we draw from that, I would say that uh, being in office, uh, being that way, may be normal. But let's not also forget that um, the first lady, if we go back in time, um, you know, sometimes she was out of the country and then she came back and there were rumors whether um, she was pregnant. I mean, there were all sorts of things about the lady. So I, I personally want to believe that uh, if she has added and she's uh, made, I, I just don't feel, you know, that um, it is perhaps something that she maybe loves so much. That's why I decided to use the word body shaming. Um, if uh, she has, if she's in that office 
I mean, she's wife of president. She has the right. If she's comfortable with the way her body looks, then it's fine. Uh, for somebody to come and say she has fed fat, you know, on government money, we must also realize that there are people who are not also in government who, you know, uh, by virtue of um, having life improve and get better for them, have also added if you're in a position Mr. of comfort. Just, just a moment. Spend. Something really funny just came to my mind as we're talking about this. This statement that uh, Adamu made is the direct opposite of the statement the husband of Aisha Buhari did. I mean, the Mr. President, when he was trying to commend the um, Inspector General of Police then, and he said, you can, you can see that he's working. He's very thin. He's, <laughs> he's, there's no fat in his body. It shows that he's, he's working really hard. Um, if at, at the, the Inspector General at that time had taken offense and said that the President was body shaming him that he's not fat enough, would that be justifiable? Well, definitely. I think context matters in every event, in everything that we do. The context from which a statement is made is, uh, is what really determines how we will interpret it. Uh, yes, um, the context from which Mr. President was talking about the IG then uh, is a totally different con context. So uh, I, I do not think that we can compare both. But talking about comparing, really, uh, we must realize that the First Lady Aisha Buhari does not officially have a role to play. I think most of her roles are in governance, are perhaps ceremonial. Uh, perhaps she has to, you know, there, there is no statutory or com constitutional role, so to speak, for her to have filled, you know, as a Nigerian uh, or as the wife of president. Hence, uh, all she has, basically, as far as I think or I know, is comfort. Maybe um, for the for other persons who might have seen that office as an opportunity to exercise, you know, or to impact society, maybe she's doing that at her own pace, at her own level. And she's perhaps getting the results that she so desires. And so uh, maybe by virtue of that comfort, she's getting, um, she's adding weight. I, I do not think that uh, the context from which uh, Aminu is speaking and the context from which um, President Buhari was referring to the former IEG is, uh, I don't think they are the same context. Yeah, they, they could be different. But, but just finally now, um, uh, some people are getting worried about what is happening because of another reason, maybe not related. Um, people have come out to condemn this action of the First Lady as she just using power, abusing power the way it should not be abused. That It is because uh, she's the way she is. We remember there is no name that uh, the wife of the previous uh, president was not called. There's no name. Uh, still, there was nobody that went to a court for whatever reason. But now that the public outcry has been that she shouldn't have done this, at least some quarters, some people believe that she shouldn't have done this, they have come up with another revelation that this guy who made this statement had threatened the people who were condemning the killers of Deborah. You remember the young lady that was killed in the north uh, by some extremists. So they have come out with that information that he, once upon a time, threatened the people who were condemning the killing of Deborah. Now, the question is, why this information now? Are, are, are we being blackmailed into accepting the fact that this guy is so bad and he deserves to go to prison or to be hanged. They are seeing it as a blackmail. What do you see? Briefly now, because we are mm. rounding off. Well, it, 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 it perhaps could uh, actually be that way. I mean, I mean, giving a dog a bad name so you can hang it, it could be. I mean, there are definitely different sides to actually looking at the issue on ground. But I would like to speak more to um, the First Lady, you know, having this guy arrested. I think I will speak, you know, from my own point of view, uh, that uh, the, this administration have been quite intolerant, you know, uh, where it comes to certain issues, especially uh, where it comes to criticism. Um, I, I, I make bold to say that because we would remember that the same space uh, from which um, this, um, this point was made is the same space you know, that was banned for several months in this country, you do remember, and businesses were shut down, businesses, you know, that could profit from this. And why? Because Mr. President felt personally abused, and the handlers of office at the time, uh, and the handlers of Mr. President felt that Mr. President had been disrespected. 
Uh, but I think we are in democracy, and uh, while in democracy, uh, free speech is, um, is is one of the order of the day. Is one of the things you know that should be um, the qualities of a thriving democratic government. Uh, we also should also, uh, and from that point of view, I think um, every person that is in leadership. Uh, should be tolerant enough, should be able to know that, well, this is one of the facts. This is one of the things that uh, democracy gives to us as a people. However, I will still uh, not totally uh, uh, support that uh, we should now take advantage, you know, of um, this free speech. Uh, like somebody said, uh, you, only free speech is guaranteed. You do not, you cannot guarantee what happened after, after free, free speech. speech. You know, so um, while it is condemnable, in my view, that this young man is arrested, if you ask me if I were in her shoes or I was in the presidency, what would I have done? I would simply tell you that I would ignore this young man, especially because she gave an example. Um, talking about the previous administration of President um, Goodluck Jonathan, uh, who, you know, experienced all sorts of abuses. We have seen it before, but because they understood that this is, the, the, this is democracy and you cannot stop people from saying what they want to say, no matter how much you try. Uh, you know, people will still have their opinions, whether wrong or right. What we must continue okay. to do is continue to conscientize the people uh, to say the right things and provide the right information. And if we're in public office, we should act accordingly so that uh, uh, the expectations of people are met at least to a very, very large percent. Okay. Uh, you cannot satisfy every human being, that is certain. But, I mean, we should be able to, a large extent, uh, play by the rule of law so that what is good for this is also good for the Ghana. Okay. Uh, well, thank you so much, Mr. Uh, Lubenga George, uh, for coming on the show. Uh, your insight has been really very good. And we do hope that um, we can have more engagements on more or different topics uh, in the future. Thank you so much for coming. It's been a pleasure. Thank you so much. Okay, we've been talking with Mr. Lubenga George, a political analyst and head, Political Desk African Civil Society Forum. We'll take a break now. For